Alright, what's going on guys? Uh, so I didn't see this video yesterday, but uh, they've now shown off a little bit of you know, how content's going to be created. Um, just noticing in that replay there, that diving volley, that appeared to be, that appeared to look the same as the diving volley they introduced in the first game, which was really, really horrible to see. Uh, so it makes me wonder if that's still the same animation because yeah when when they show that diving animation it yeah uh, it just it did not look it did not look good uh just go back a bit there so obviously these are the sort of things you get to choose preferred hand preferred style ground stroke style serve style receive style so you can't see how many there is exactly uh net aggression obviously if you're creating your own player well you can go to the net whenever you want or as little as you want anyway so obviously this is probably more designed at people who are creating like all the other players on tour uh preferred service all courts preferred game style all rounder so i'm not 100 percent sure what game styles there are and obviously preferred service like obviously some some people might put clay or grass or or hard or or i don't know if there's an indoor option but um, yes, yeah, so obviously venue creation is still a thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, but yeah, this is the interesting part because this player selection screen has changed from the first one. But I get the feeling because this is a scenario creator, maybe it doesn't show those six locked players. Maybe that's why this like this appears this way and doesn't show the six lock players because you can't actually select them anyway regardless of the situation so maybe the like the casual mode shows the lock players until you obviously unlock them and then maybe then they appear in the scenario but uh yeah so there does appear to be a lot of tennis world tour carryovers with this game like obviously kachanov one fees uh tfo Edmund, uh, and there's a couple from a couple of women's players as well. Uh, so it sort of makes you wonder. A lot of people are curious if you know, say Federer is going to be in the game, and and I don't know. There's some people want the Williams sisters and Djokovic and things like that. But it seems a bit strange that they said they were going to announce more players up until Christmas and. Well, for me right now, it's nearly 1am on the 21st of December in Australia, so we haven't heard a peep, so I don't really know what to, how to go about that. Um, but yeah, there's also, we can't tell if that was AI or not either, but there was also this interview that Operation Sports dot com did with the big ant ceo <clears throat> uh and it also gives a release date for north america february 11th 2020 so it is going to be later in some areas uh digitally released on steam january 9th obviously australia new zealand and i'm guessing like europe and and whatnot uh, is going to be the ninth as well but yeah like so the operation sports forum got asked to submit some questions and, and then they were going to try and uh s submit them to the ceo and try and get him to answer them uh like this first question is pretty straightforward i mean that that was the same as the first game like will creations appear in the career mode so on and so forth obviously you've got to do all your creating players wise ahead of time otherwise they won't appear in their career stadiums i remember would appear even after you've already started your career so you didn't have to start again stadiums wise but if you wanted to add more players you'd have to start over again uh which is yeah that's reasonable um obviously yeah gameplay that's the key part here um so yeah, he's saying they've given the players more weapons, more in-game, weapons in-game to finish points quicker. 
who worked hard at the net game, improved the speed and drive of the game, stamina. So, like, stamina was a big, big issue with the AI and just seemingly having an endless supply of stamina. And then, uh, I can't remember how many patches it took to recognise that, but it, it seemingly still didn't really change things. Um, yeah, so... I'm curious to see how the ball plays on clay courts because uh, in the first game most courts played exactly the same like yeah you could adjust the sliders and things like that but it, it still wouldn't feel like you were playing on clay like uh, like there's obviously a lot of pace in in clay court matches and then the ball like as, as it hits the ground it sort of holds up um, but you didn't get that real you didn't really get that feeling with the first game so I'm not really sure how they're going to go with that but that's something I'm curious to see uh, so it's basically saying you with the career mode you I don't know it's, it's, it's sort of a contradiction really like you can and you can't play as Nadal but the way this is worded it makes it sound like you can't play as Nadal because it says or, or an existing star that's already jostling with the likes of Nadal so that means not being able to select Nadal so that makes no sense uh, can you explain the process of getting like player license in the game yeah I've seen him answer that question before on Twitter and yeah can't really go into detail as to how that works which you know it's fair enough I think a lot of people are, are, are confused about the fact that uh, tennis players have their own image rights, so they are individually licensed. They're, it's not like FIFA and the NBA and things like that, where uh, they're all under one, like one organization. Uh, like, if, if that was the case, then like all you know, tennis game makers would have to do is go to the ATP or the WTA and then they'd go, oh yeah, well, you know, let's 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 make a massive tennis game with all these players' faces and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, it, it, it'll just never happen unless the image rights go to the the tennis gov governing bodies. Uh, but yeah, that, that that's why you'll never see, I reckon, 35, 40 players will be the most absolute most licensed players you'll ever see in a tennis game otherwise you know it's just this creation method so I'm, I'm sure I'll have to answer that question further uh, in the future but yeah that's how that works can you watch CPU versus CPU in career or exhibition mode uh, he says yes but I don't know which part of the question he's saying yes to because that was always a thing in exhibition mode, aka casual mode, because I personally did a lot of those videos for like simulation videos uh, throughout the ATP WTA seasons uh, since the game came out last year. But he doesn't really ref he doesn't really mention the career mode side of it. Like I I'd, I'd have to see that to believe it. Um, like when the first game was. A big of a grind as what it was. Uh, I I don't know why you'd want to watch CPU versus CPU games in the career mode. I mean, uh, do clay courts show more wear and tear during matches? Yes, both clay and grass courts will show degradation through matches and tournaments. That's kind of good to hear. Uh, yeah, there's no licensed shoes. There's no licensed equipment, clothing. That that's the idea of the the creation system in the game, the academy, because uh, I mean that, much like players, it's just too expensive to get that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, more equipment, uh, commentary. Well, there's never going to be commentary because typically, like no, no offense to Big Ant, but the commentary in their cricket games, uh, and then rugby league which they used to do, it, it, it's, it, it just sounds so forced. And it, it is very, very cringy. So it, it's not really even worth thinking about commentary uh, in their tennis games. Like, obviously they say they're trying to 
like sort of recreate the the match experience like actually being there in the audience rather than like a TV style uh, situation uh, yeah so the career mode's been redesigned as they say because uh, it, it, it was pretty basic in the first game you didn't really it, it didn't really feel like you had much of a purpose other than to get to world number one obviously that is the main purpose in these sorts of games but like it, it just it it felt like it, it the first game was a real grind so that was the big one of the biggest issues uh player specific animations i'm curious to see nadal's unique forehand action as it, he words it because even Nadal's forehand in the first game looked a bit suspect at times, so um, yeah, I'm curious to see like how a lot of the animations go in comparison to the first game. Scenario editor that was shown in that content creator video. Uh, yeah, so I, I really hope that they have taken on board what a lot of the player base has said about the first game like I know he doesn't listen to me to me because he, he you know he doesn't like me like yeah you know, I got blocked on their their Twitter and YouTube channel so um, in, in my experience uh, dealing with the big ant CEO doesn't take criticism very well really doesn't um, chances are if you've directed something at him on Twitter uh, and it's been quite you know uh, quite direct and quite quite critical chances are you've probably been blocked um, yeah so I don't know anyway uh, so yeah that's pretty much all just I'll, I'll link both the video and this article in the I'll pin it to the top of the comments as I usually do uh, for for you know the people that haven't seen this like obviously this article came out like three days ago and this video is uh, two days ago pretty much so yeah hopefully we can get some gameplay soon.